My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Let us bow together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are magnificent and wonderful, holy and beautiful. We praise you as our creator and our friend, for you have journeyed through every part of life with us. You have sustained us, you have nourished us, and you have taken care of us. So Lord, in response to your goodness, our hearts bow before you in worship. Bless us, we pray, with the Holy Spirit, so that as we worship you and as we think of your goodness, as we meditate upon your word, may everything be holy and pleasing in your sight. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 to 7, Circumcision, the Sign of the Covenant. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. I will make my covenant with you and give you many descendants. Abram bowed down with his face touching the ground, and God said, I make this covenant with you 
I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, because I am making you the ancestor of many nations. I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings. You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will keep my promise to you and to your descendants in future generations as an everlasting covenant. I will be your God and the God of your descendants. I will give to you and to your descendants this land in which you are now a foreigner. The whole land of Canaan will belong to your descendants forever, and I will be their God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Reading from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Jesus speaks about his suffering and death. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will rise to life. He made this very clear to them. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned around, looked at his disciples, and rebuked Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. Your thoughts don't come from God, but from human nature. Then Jesus called the crowd and his disciples to him. If any of you want to come with me, he told them, you must forget yourself, carry your cross and follow me. For if you want to save your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for me and for the gospel, you will save it. Do you gain anything if you win the whole world but lose your life? Of course not. There is nothing you can give to regain your life. If you are ashamed of me and of my teaching in this godless and wicked day, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of you when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. I truly believe that God uses creation and nature to teach us important lessons of faith. If it's okay with you, I'd like to share a story about my pets. I have three dogs that live outside. Now they have an entire dog run to themselves. There's a beautiful strip of grass, they have kennels for shelter, they always have food and water. There's a nice cool breeze that passes by and they always have shade under huge mango trees. Sometimes I even see them climbing the trees and eating some mangoes. To me, they live a pretty good life with no rent and no bills to pay. Yet for some strange reason, they always try to escape. I keep them in the dog run where it is safe and where they can be comfortable, yet they are not satisfied. They want to escape. They want more. When I observed the behavior of my pets, I wondered, God, what are you trying to teach me? At first, I thought God was teaching me to settle down and be satisfied with what I have. Don't be like dogs who always seem to want more, be greedy for more. But dogs are so smart and so intuitive. What if my pets Instead, we're teaching me about breaking free, about being brave enough to push beyond the boundaries. And then we met these beautiful scripture readings. And I thought, wow, what a lesson. First, we met our friend Abraham in Genesis. God tells Abraham, this is the future that I have for you. 
you are no longer Abram, but Abraham. For you will be the ancestor to many nations. I will not just be your God, but the God of your descendants. Here's the thing. What descendants? Abraham had no children. Worse yet, how old was Abraham when God made this promise to him? 99 years old. Some of us don't even know if we will make it to that age. But here was God asking Abraham to push the boundaries. Push the boundary of age. Push the boundary of your human understanding. Push the boundary of your faith. Because I am calling you to a future that is so great. I am calling you to your purpose. But I wonder how many of us are too afraid to push these boundaries? How many of us have made ourselves comfortable living in the dog run? For example, we become too comfortable with our prayer life and satisfied with the bare minimum. We become too comfortable with ignoring the cries of injustice once it doesn't affect us. We've become too comfortable and let others treat us and abuse us however they want. We become too comfortable with just accepting the way things are. So much so that we don't realize that we have perpetuated a society of violence where parents mercilessly abuse their children, where our daughters stay in abusive relationships, and where our boys feel as though they could treat us any way they like. But today, I believe that God is calling each one of us to push the boundaries Push the boundaries of what our society could be. Push the boundaries of our church life in this world. Push the boundaries of our own spirituality and our faith. Break free of the traps that prevent us from following God's call. Jesus in our gospel reading tells us how we can push past these boundaries of our lives. And it's a simple formula. Forget yourself, carry your cross, and follow me. Forget yourself. The Greek word translates to forget, deny, or even reject yourself. And this isn't a rejection because you are unloved or unworthy. But we need to reject ourselves because we are human. And as beautiful as we are as God's children, we have some problems that we need to work on too. And this is why we must reject ourselves. There are parts of us that are the problem, like our anger, our expectations, our grudges, our greed, our addictions, whatever it is, we need to let it go. So forget yourself and carry your cross. Pushing the boundary is never easy. It requires vision, ambition, resilience, and a lot of energy. Pushing the boundary requires you to pick up your cross. Pushing the boundary may mean putting up with others who are trying to stop you, who are yelling at you, saying, no, you are wrong in the name of tradition. But in our scripture, Jesus began preparing for that cross, knowing that he would have been rejected by others. He knew that he would have to suffer because those holding power and authority were too afraid to push beyond the boundaries of their own faith. But Jesus says, deny yourself and carry your cross. We are more resilient than we think. So if we are brave enough to do it, 
pick up your cross. And then what? Follow me. Well, not me. Follow Christ. To follow Christ is to live a life that pushes beyond boundaries. Firstly, Christ calls us to follow him and push the boundaries of our faith. While Jesus was on earth, the religious leaders were stuck in their boundaries of what it means to be holy. They were slaves to arrogance and the law. But Jesus came and taught us how to always seek more in our relationship with God, to go beyond lip service, to pray and fast for justice and change in our world, to be led by the spirit of love instead of that of hate. So we need to push some boundaries and never become satisfied with the current level of faith we have. There is so much more to read, so much more to sing about God, so much to talk to God about, and so much to do in this world. So follow Christ and push the boundaries of what your relationship with God can be. Secondly, Christ calls us to follow him and push the boundaries of our love. We know the song, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. This world gives you a standard, a criteria of who and how to love one another. But Jesus pushed past these boundaries of society and loved who society despised. He loved the sinner. He loved the oppressed and he loved the sick. We too have to push past these boundaries of who we love and how we love. We need to push past the boundaries of how we love God and instead love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength. We need to push past the boundaries of how we currently love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, which means we also need to love ourselves too. We need to push past the boundaries of our love and love our enemies. Thirdly, Christ calls us to follow him and push past the boundaries of our mind. Most of the problem in the world right now is because of how we think. We're stuck in a Sunday school state of thinking. We don't ask questions and we take knowledge for granted. For example, some of us may have heard the saying that woman must submit to the man. And society just accepts that, saying, well, yes, it's in the Bible. It's true, Paul wrote it. So, where do we go from here? Well, we need to ask the questions. We need to use our mind and think. Why is scripture there? Why is that particular scripture written? What does it mean in the Greek? Was that applicable to our society then? but may not be God's vision for us now? Why do we choose to follow this practice, but yet we're breaking all the other rules in Leviticus that even says we shouldn't wear clothes with two different types of material? But you know, change happens when someone decides to think outside of the box when someone decides to push the boundaries of their mind. Jesus tried to push the limit of human wisdom by teaching in amazing parables and challenging the religious leaders to go beyond empty tradition and think, why do I do what I do? Friends, you know how they say nothing in life is free? Well, you're thinking and using your mind is free. So let your thoughts soar, let them grow, and let it think about ways to change our world. We are in the season of Lent, and there is no better time to push the boundaries of our faith, love, and mind than right here, right now. There is no better time to deny ourselves, pick up our crosses, and follow Christ. God is calling us to our freedom. 
What boundaries are God calling you to push today? And are you brave enough to do it? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of God the Father, the peace of Christ the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>